my name is Andrea Dorfman and I am the director, writer, producer and cinematographer of my first feature film called Parsley Days. Just give us your name and your... I think that the film festival is what you make of it. The film I made was an incredibly tiny, tiny film in the grand scheme of things. We had a tiny budget, we had absolutely no known actors. Um, I shot it myself, so I'm not saying the production value was low, but obviously I was limited with my resources. And yet, we came into the Toronto Film Festival, and so I'm told we made quite a splash. And I think that anybody can do that. I think it has to do with the passion behind the film, the people who you collaborate with and who you bring onto the film festival circuit with you. I think it has to do with how you promote the film. You know, we made, t we made little friendship pins and we gave them out to everybody and it was a great idea. And, uh, and so we sort of became known at the film festival. And I also think that, that it has a lot to do with just enthusiasm. My name is Rohan Fernando. Um, I'm a filmmaker and I live in Halifax. I'm not necessarily the, the best kind of person to talk, you know, to strike up conversations out of the blue and then, you know, talk about things like funding or, you know, whatever you're supposed to talk about at festivals. So I just didn't know what I was supposed to do. What are you so supposed I, to talk about at festivals? I don't know. I guess you're supposed to be making deals and schmoozing and taking advantage of the fact that all these people are here at once and I just ended up drinking a lot which yeah, which works. works against yeah well I mean when you're slurring to the broadcaster it's they don't really you know think of you as a competent filmmaker or maybe they do because you know the cliche is here you know a tortured artist must drink the best part of the festival is is being there with the audience and hearing what they have to say and then you know going back to a party afterwards drinking and hearing more about what people have to say or what people don't have to say you know <laughs> if you get well it looked good a lot then you know you're in a little bit of trouble <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to the washroom with you, no matter how cute you are. To me, learning how to make films that are going to capture the imagination of the world is still uh, a difficult and exacting talent, uh, both from a cinematography standpoint, from an editing standpoint, from a production design standpoint from a writer and directorial standpoint. So, but there's, it's a great place to learn. Any, anybody can rent a camera and go out and make a film. And I think you're gonna see more of that. But don't kid yourself, it is still an art. How level of a playing field do you feel it is for first time filmmakers at a festival? A life is not fair. Any tips on how to level that playing field? Uh, you can only level it yourself by fighting a little harder on the playing field and making the playing field your field. So it depends how much you want it and how deep your commitment is. Welcome to the ladies' washroom, Stephen. Wow, thanks. Well, why doesn't everybody, uh, when well, we just check out our levels? Um, well, you know what's really nice? They actually have Kleenex, you know? Oh, yeah, that's right. You have Kleenex. Unlike, you know, most bathrooms, you'd have to go take toilet know. paper. But there's so much space, you know? Like, I can stand back here and get a what full... What did they do, like, jumping jacks and stuff? Oh, is that why to get a full body? Yeah. Well, I mean, oh. there's so much space. I mean, look at all these bathrooms. There's one, two, three, four, five... 
six, seven, eight bathrooms. There's, there are no lineups in this bathroom. You know, you spend like 10 months putting your heart and soul into a short and all of a sudden you have an audience. And I think that's what's really great about the festival circuit is that you have that instant dialogue. And I think the Atlantic Film Festival really creates an atmosphere that allows filmmakers to present their work, but also to get immediate response from their audience. And it, it feels pretty overwhelming, but yet at the same time, I feel, I feel privileged to be part of a festival and to be part of a community here in Atlanta, Canada. That's that's my cell phone. Um, I guess it's my agent. Yeah, get it, get it. I think get it, it must please be. Get it. Is it Miramax? Get it. Please, okay. quite sure that um, you can speak about a level playing field in that regard because there's a lot of different films you're talking about five minute films that that are in the festival uh, films that are, are full feature length films so um, each film is different and I think the challenge of, of filmmakers participating in a festival is determining for yourself as a filmmaker why you're going why you want to be there and once you set your own goals, going after those goals, so that if you decide you want to talk to certain individuals who may be able to help you in your career, that's what you set, that's what you set your sights on and you go for it. So, I mean, there always is different levels of activity happening at film festivals in terms of, you know, feature work, uh, documentary work, short fiction work, um, and in some festivals, you know, work for, for uh, youth. So, you know, it's, I don't know that you can, exactly speak of a level playing field because it depends on what you mean by that and, and how it might be applied. Can I help like this? You like that? Yeah. yeah thanks for your how about that? It's like it's a good like you are thanking me for my patience, but this is the place to be patient, right? Yeah. This is where most people are the most patient. In sitting on a toilet, I mean. Is it a level playing field? Is everybody the same? Is it equal opportunity mm -hmm. to make that next film or? No, like it's never equal. I think you are in a festival you've got all sort of a, a hierarchy of events of in films and filmmakers and all that. And you know, if you're allowed in, like you should always feel privileged if you're allowed in as a uh, newcomer and you come in and you take your place and you just wait to see what happens. And it's not really in the way you are, you're not the one really deciding for what's happening, you know, like it's the world around you and the, the audience. The audience truly is the first, uh, might be the most determinant factor and all that. And then the critics and the, and, and, and the, the journalists 
and they are the one to give you a space or not uh, it's not about taking your space I don't believe that you can take your space you're there you're there with your film and your film is reaching or not and then and then yeah, then you have to wait for until it happens I mean, the, the whole thing about festivals and, and uh, it's really about making your next film, right? It's, there's, a, you know, there's a thousand, for every person, for every filmmaker, there's a thousand other people that want to have the money that they have to make their movie. And it's all about just, you know, you have to get recognition. And most people, no one's going to give you money unless if you haven't done anything. Like, that's the first rule, right? So, if you haven't made a movie, <clears throat> if you want to make a million dollar feature and you haven't done anything, you'll never make it unless you have your own million dollars or you're a famous theater director who's done plays, you know, like you have to have a reputation. You have to have something to show people that you can do what you claim you can do. And, and it all comes down to short films generally and you've got to sh make short. And, you know, maybe chances are, I mean, awards don't hurt, but they're not necessary. You know, it, it really depends on what your next film is. If you say, well, I want to make this million dollar film and it's about, you know, a guy fishing in a boat and I made a short film it was, that I did pretty well and it's about a guy fishing in a boat. And they'll go, oh yeah, I made a film about a guy fishing in a boat and look, he, yeah, and this, I can see, people want to be told, you know, they want everything to be very simple, you know, and so it's like, oh yeah, we see he can do this and he wants to do this. Oh, you know, obviously this can happen, right? But if you, you know, if you've made a film about a little guy sh fishing in a boat and you want to make an action thriller, you know, and they're going to go, oh, I don't know, I don't see the difference, there's a big difference between an action thriller and a guy in a boat. My name is Ezra Seuferman. I'm a filmmaker from Montreal, documentary filmmaker, shooting a lot of stuff on DV. A little hologram will pop up. A film must speak for itself. A film has to talk to the audience. It has to talk to the viewer. And let's say you have movie A, and movie A is screening at a festival, and you've got 200 people in the audience. Maybe half of the people in the audience will walk out and say, wow, I love that movie. And the other half will say, oh, God, did that thing ever suck? Now, that's pretty good. At least half the people say, wow, amazing film. If everybody walks out and says that it sucked, you're in trouble. But you've got to figure that no matter what the budget is on a film, you could spend $2 million on a movie or $50 million on a movie. And sometimes you hear that these $50 million movies, people walk out and everybody says, oh, my God, that movie sucked. So. When you're talking about a level playing field, I guess if you make a $50 movie or a $1,000 movie and you make something that's really original, memorable, inspiring, and clever, and it works, and, and 75 or even 50% of the audience comes out and says, holy smokes, what a great film, then you're, you're way ahead of the $50 million movie that sucks. <laughs>